Hey kids, today I'm going to talk about South Sudan. It's the newest country in the world, becoming fully independent just in 2011. So I'm going to explain why the state came into being and what it's like there today. So to understand why South Sudan exists, you kind of have to know a bit about Sudan as a whole. So before 1956, Sudan was under the joint control of Egypt and Britain. At the end of 1955, they gave a declaration of independence and became their own thing. The independence movement, however, was led by this guy, Ismail Al-Azari. And he was like, hey everybody, we are an arab oriented oriented Muslim nation. But then like 8 million Sudanese black people were like, whoa now, hold your camels, Ishmael. Us Africans, we ain't all about your Allah. He was like, yeah, well who cares? Oh, I see. So they got into a civil war between the primarily Arab Muslim North and the traditionally oriented African South. That went on for 16 years until finally the North's like, all right, fine, you can do your thing. Like, you're still part of Sudan, but you can govern yourself for the most part. We'll take our falafels elsewhere. And that peace treaty lasted 11 years from 1972 to 1983. Eventually, the South was like, well, things aren't that bad now, but the Arabs still technically control us, so it could get worse. And I'm not in the mood for any Sharia law anytime soon, so we should probably go back to fighting. So then there was another civil war, which was basically a continuation of the first one, and that ran on from 1983 all the way to 2005, when finally the two sides made a comprehensive peace agreement, which led to South Sudan becoming totally self-governing in 2006. Then after five more years of fiddling around with paperwork, South Sudan became a fully-fledged independent nation in 2011. So notice how there were two civil wars before the South gained independence. I I guess you could say, two coups make a sedan. So now that they finally got what they want, it must be great to live in South Sudan now, right? No, no, not really. It's actually just about the worst place you could ever choose to live in. Seriously, if somebody gave me the choice of moving to South Sudan, or living the rest of my life with my dick inside an anthill, I'd be slathering on the honey before they even finish their sentence. Let me talk about a few reasons South Sudan sucks so bad. First, let me talk about ethnic groups. Europe, as we all know, contains a lot of ethnic groups. Scots, Serbs, Slovaks, Slovenes, Spaniards, Swedes. And those are just the big ones that start with S. There's like a hundred others. The same is true with Africa. There are thousands of localized ethnic groups sprinkled all over the continent, whether or not you could tell from first glance. As such, South Sudan is home to a bunch of different peoples, each with their own languages and customs. And these groups have a long history of disagreeing with each other, like they don't get along much. So that's one thing. Second, remember how South Sudan was at war with the North for basically all of the past half a century? Well as a result, the whole place is pretty geared for war and not much else. Their infrastructure is abysmal and they've got all these guns just lying around waiting to be shot at something. Third, South Sudan has a bunch of oil reserves in different locations around the nation. And we all know how much people like oil. Everybody wants control of whatever wells they can get. So between these three things, the whole place is basically one big whirlpool of chaos. At any given time, the South Sudan government is at war with at least seven different armed groups from around the country, each of which is also at war with the other groups. And if that's not enough of a shitstorm, the government ended up basically splitting in two in 2013. This is what happened. So you've got the president, his name is Salva Kiir, and yes, he does actually wear a hat like this. It was a gift from George Bush. True story. And then the vice president. His name is Reek Makar. I'm probably saying those wrong, but it's fine. They don't have internet in South Sudan, so nobody can call me out here. So anyway, Salva Kiir, he's very aware of the fact that the country's in a very precarious spot at the moment. So he starts taking greater control of the government and the military, dismissing old people and installing those that he sees fit. And so Reek Makar, he's like, well, gee whiz, Salva Kiir, for someone who calls himself a president, that's pretty dictator of you. Well, for someone who calls himself the vice president, that's pretty annoying asshole of you. Sir, all I'm saying is, you know, I'm getting pretty sick of you and that gay hat of yours. I, I'm not wearing a hat. As president of South Sudan, I order you to put on a hat. Yeah, see? That hat's gay. You're wearing the exact same hat. Alright, fuck you, you're out of a job. Wait, what? Yep, you and your whole cabinet, get out. Okay, I made up the part about the hat, but the rest of that is true. Also, I should mention that Kir and Makar come from two different ethnic groups. See, Kir is a Dinka, whereas Makar is a newer, which only heightened the tensions between the two. So after Makar got the boot, he ended up taking a chunk of the military with him, most of which were newers like him, and they started a rebellion against Kir's government. This is known as the South Sudan Civil War, and it's still going on to this day. So yeah, to sum it up, if you looked up clusterfuck in the dictionary, 
Well, you wouldn't find anything because clusterfuck isn't a real word. But if it was, there would probably be a picture of South Sudan next to it. Seriously, this place makes Hotel Rwanda look like Hotel California. And throughout it all, there's still a bunch of hardworking individuals just trying to make a living, farming or herding or whatever. But the constant warfare makes it so the average person has to live in virtually Stone Age conditions. Which sucks, but, you know, what can you do? So that's the story of the world's newest nation, kids. Till next time, I'm Salmonella, and thank you for watching. Thank you.